when you do something that's coming personal and and it, you're exploring your truth and you're sincerely exploring it, you're not trying to just shove a message down people's throat. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to just, yeah. uh, you know, get money or fame or something like that or some kind of outside want that this is just a way you think is a way to if you're actually truly exploring art and create and 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 trying to find a truth then it's about connecting what's inside you with other people I am interviewing today the creators, the brave makers of Douchaholics. I'm interviewing them on my podcast called Holy Cannoli. Welcome to the podcast, my friends, Sean McCarthy and Elizabeth Mitchell. This whole podcast I was just telling you guys is all about how we experience the transcendent in the most random ways. And you guys know I'm a pastor and I have all these like, you know, th this weird life of theology and preaching and all that kind of stuff. But I also love film and storytelling. When you hear that idea of experiencing the transcendent or the divine and random and holy moments, how do you describe that? How would you say that that's true for you, especially doing a show that's called Doucheaholics? For me, always, um, ever since I understood anything about characters and even just the human condition, I've always kind of gravitated towards films and, and characters that are funny, but when you really think about it, it's sad almost. And I think you could say that about all these characters. If you really analyze them and take out all the take out all the jokes and all the humor, then you go, well, it's just a very flawed and mm -hmm. kind of tragic human being. And the beautiful thing about this meeting, even though I don't think it really helps them, <laughs> if I'm being honest, is in order to be at a meeting like this, you have to want to improve yourself. You have to understand that there's a change that needs to be made. And so even if they come week after week and they kind of maybe only get worse, at least they're coming and at least they're, they're recognizing something within themselves that is flawed and needs a change. Let's say you, Sean. <laughs> um, it's not our project that's getting the rea reaction, it's how they're reacting to the project when they hear it. And it could be come from a snobbery of hearing the word, or it could be like, oh, that's just funny off the bat, or somebody's like, oh, it's about douche it's like a sketch comedy. But really, there's a, there, it's all grounded in human emotions if you took away all the comedy from it. All the psychological reasonings and logic and interactions and conflicts between the characters are 100% real and they're grounded in real emotions and real psych psychological nature. This idea of experiencing God, you know, in and through film, I think is a, really a power. I never realized that. That's why everybody goes into filmmaking. Some people want money and fame yeah, and yeah. sex and drugs. But a lot of people, they want to make a difference in the world. And a connection. Yeah. When people reject something based on their faith or based on, well, this is how, how God would want it. God also told us through Jesus, do not judge people. Mm -hmm. When you do something that's coming personal and and it, you're exploring your truth and you're sincerely exploring it, you're not trying to just shove a message down people's throat. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to just, yeah. uh, you know, get money or fame or something like that or some kind of outside want that this is just a way you think is a way to if you're actually truly exploring art and trying to find a truth then it's about connecting what's inside you with other people how we experienced freedom in some weird unique ways of coming and pushing off that old stuff maybe that people would want to put on you from religion or from you know a, a growing up church background and do you have any stories that can illustrate that once I went like, wait, why am I feeling guilty? Because I was in this institution for 12 years and then, you know, church on Sunday, every morning, 9 a.m. that told me that I need to feel guilty about mm. what I feel is my truth. Mm. Well, that just didn't, it just didn't click with me. It didn't compute with me. And I think once I went, I don't, I don't need to subscribe to that. There is something about just where story comes from. Yeah. And if you look at like all the religions, if you look at the common denominator, if you look at the, everyone can disagree about the details essentially, but like from Christian to Catholic to Buddhism to every major religion, those are all similar things and those are all similar stories and stories come down to essentially order and sequence, right? Order and sequences is the way we live our life, the way we find revelations throughout our life. I think there's an order and sequence to, that's what storytelling is, right? It's like the character knows this at this point, deals with this conflict, discovers something, 
and learn something about themselves. And that's what story is trying to communicate. And in that, you're communicating a universal truth. The one thing I took, the simplicity mm -hmm. of my seminary, of my biblical studies, you know, my time as a pastor, is that God, the whole idea, the story of God is that God became flesh. God became human. Mm -hmm. in, in the Greek, the word is logos. God became the actual words. And I think about that, like I'm holding one of my scripts right here. Like we are trying to do, we're trying to be God. Mm -hmm. We're trying to be like God, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're trying to be, yeah. God wants that. He wants, the creative universe wants us to be creators, to mm -hmm. create, to tell stories, to tell stories that connect, that heal, that make us laugh, that convict us, that make us feel like this is possibly tragic, and this could happen in my life if I don't do something about it. So I think we're in, we're in good company. There's some great stuff that we're a part yeah. of, and you guys are doing it, and thanks for doing it, and thanks for being a part of the um, my, you know, like, I have stuff that I am working on because of you guys, because oh, of Douchaholics. Like that's I awesome. Have, See that, that wrote, right there? That, I wrote my own series because you guys did yeah. Douchaholics. That, that, that makes me happy, theater. right? Like yeah. it's, it's like a, it's the that thing of exploring your truth yeah. and inspiring. And, connect. and, you know, that's why when we're sitting there and we hear people laugh, love it. Because we just made someone's moment, at yeah. least that moment, brighter. That, that touches me to hear that you were inspired. Mm -hmm. Other people came up and said, I'm so inspired by what you guys are doing. And we're like, wow, this is like... That's awesome because it just came as a couple's joke yeah. that was like we just got excited about talking about something and then it turned into this the thing. The idea where... became words, the mm -hmm. words became a story, the story became a digital series, the digital yeah. series became... <laughs> Shalomics! <laughs> Hey guys, we just met with Tony and uh, had a great interview. Tony let us dig a little bit deeper, talk about some of the, uh, the very real, not so funny human elements underneath the characters that are making laugh. That was cool talking about with, with Tony and not just going, you know, people who just want to enjoy the entertaining side or think of it as just jokes and comedy, that, you know, they can do that too. If that's all people take from it, it's just laughing and the jokes and the silliness of it, like, beautiful, we've done our job. Faith or no faith or it doesn't really matter, it's just exploring about being the human condition and what's our purpose on this planet. So it's fun to do that with a show called Douchaholics.